This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Droid Charge by Samsung. This is going to be available on Verizon Wireless on April 28th for $299 with contract. That's $100 more than usual, but you're paying a little extra because of that, or more than a little extra, for that LTE service. This has LTE 4G, making it a pretty special phone on Verizon's network, one of the first we're seeing with LTE. It's got a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED display, which means those ultra vibrant colors and very bright display overall, and as large as you can get in terms of screen real estate. Resolution is still 800 by 480. Unfortunately, we're not going up to something higher, but it's also quite readable given the resolution relative to display size. We've got actual mechanical clicky buttons down here instead of capacitive buttons on the sort of unique chin. These days, when all phones are looking pretty much like a rounded rectangle here, We've got this little pointy area over here. Uh, it's up to you as to whether you think that's attractive or not. Thickness, yeah, the phone's thick. That's where the chin is, so that's the thickest right over there. You can see here's the side view. Comes out like so. Volume buttons here. You've got your micro USB port over here. 3.5 millimeter jack. Power button and your HDMI port underneath the well affixed little door and that's a micro HDMI port. Back, typical Samsung kind of plasticky with a pattern on it. Mm, wish they would start changing that but 8 megapixel shooter back here takes nice pictures and you've got a flash on the back as well. And up front we have a 1.3 megapixel video chat camera too. The phone is running on Samsung's single-core Hummingbird CPU with PowerVR accelerated graphics. In fact, in graphics benchmarks, it does quite well, though overall in Quadrant, it scores just a 931. Uh, in terms of performance, it's pretty fast, even though it's running TouchWiz 3.0 here, a slightly revised version of TouchWiz UI, on top of Android 2.1. And you can see, here's your standard TouchWiz look. you got your icon strip at the bottom and the side-to-side -side laid out ones. Things that are different is you got little wheel over here now, a little tool thing, and you can actually move these guys around if you wish to. Say you want to move something around, you just press and hold until it does this little haptic vibration, and you can move it around over there. And when you're done, you just press the little gear again, and voila, you have rearranged your icons, just like an iPhone. As we mentioned, that this phone's call to fame here is LTE 4G, and in speedtest.net download tests we got between 11 and almost 14 megs down in the Dallas area and between four and a half and seven megs up that is very fast and happily it also has a Wi-Fi mobile hotspot feature so you can use this guy as a high-speed wireless modem for your notebook or tablet or what have you anything with Wi-Fi pretty nice in terms of software that's pre-installed on here, you've got the DLNA All Share for sharing over your home Wi-Fi network of media, songs, and videos, that kind of thing. Amazon Kindle's preloaded. Verizon's own App Store and Backup Assistant are on here, along with BitBop again for video playback. Blockbusters here as well. Samsung goodies like daily briefing, uh, the stuff you usually see with TouchWiz, pretty much is going to be here, including their Media Hub, where they'll rent or sell you videos and TV shows to watch on the device. We've got a file explorer. Google Maps. Rock Band demo right here. And TuneWiki as well as Think Office for working with Office files. For navigation you can also use VZ Navigator as you can see installed down here. That's their Android customized version that works pretty nicely. And of course we've got Slacker Radio up here that seems to be popular. Everybody's bundling that these, day on, these days on phones. Now we're in the BitBop application, which uh, tries to compete with Moby TV, which would be like T-Mobile TV and, and the like. It's owned by Fox Mobile. And it's a $10 a month service, and we're just going to pick something available. They do have some major network stuff available here. Choose our streaming rate. And you can either download to watch it later, or you can stream it and watch it now. And we are in an LTE coverage area, though the phone doesn't always indicate 4G up top. We indeed are in an LTE Objects area. An American restoration. Today, my brother Ron and I are heading out to the desert. There's supposed to be some old salvage yard with a bunch of great stuff. Is anybody going to shoot us out here? And at the 9 meg setting, that's not bad looking. Not superb either, though. What's that? Oh, 
In terms of multimedia, as we mentioned, you have the uh, Samsung Media Hub if you want to rent or purchase movies from them. And we've got the standard YouTube player on board, and this supports Flash Player 10.2 since it's running Froyo, and we'll take a look at how that runs. Generally, full flash requires a dual core to do the best, but we're going to check it out. We'll visit our own website and play a flash video. You get both the standard and swipe keyboards on here. So here we are on our website. The usual excellent Android web browser with pinch zooming. It's responsive enough for a single core CPU. We'll check out our LG Slate YouTube flash video. We're going to test out this flash video. You can see we have 4G right now, LTE symbol right up here. Two bars out of four. Um, we'll talk about reception in a bit. But. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the LG G Slate available now on T-Mobile. This is T-Mobile's higher end honeycomb. It's actually doing pretty well for a single core phone. We'll try switching to full screen mode. And somehow we flipped upside down the process. This guy's quite a bit more expensive. He's five twenty nine with two. Yeah, that's pretty good. And seven hundred and fifty dollars without a contract. So we're talking Motorola. Certainly we have great bandwidth here. So that's the web browser and full flash video playback. In terms of additional specs, this has one gig of internal storage and a thirty two gig micro SD card is included by Verizon. And we'll take a look at the back. You can see the slot. This is one of those peel-off kind of backs you grab over here in the notch and you yank to get the back off. And here that SIM card is used for LTE. This is not a world phone. This is not for GSM. This is just for LTE. And here's our micro SD card slot right here. And then there is the 15, 1600 milliamp battery. Now LTE is famous for killing batteries and so far the phone is doing okay. Now in terms of voice quality and reception, uh, we're not doing too well with that so far. Voice, even with a pretty good signal, say two to three bars out of four, or about a 90 dB signal, warbling in the voice on both ends, sometimes a little hard to understand, and reception has been below average for us. Now, we can't compare a lot of LTE phones granted to each other, but when this is on 3G, we typically have fewer bars than we do on the Incredible 2, also coming out on Verizon April 28th. We're going to continue testing that, but I can tell you that the Incredible 2 does have better voice quality than the Droid Charge. This is the dialer interface over here. It's been skinned by Samsung. we got these uh, rather festive Halloween colors here, but the standard controls that you see on any Android phone. Access to your keypad, your call, call log, favorites, and your contacts, and a very large on-screen dialer as well. So that's the Droid Charge by Samsung on Verizon LTE phone. That's a pretty big deal, and data speeds are incredibly fast on this. Again, as we mentioned, 11 to 13 meg download speeds, and this can act as a mobile hotspot, too. Of course, you're going to pay extra for tethering, but still, it's, it's as fast as a, a 4G MiFi or a 4G data card. Really nice. You get the 4.3-inch Super AMOLED display, super vibrant colors, nice and bright. And our only real reservation with this guy is the reception and the call quality just seem a bit below par. We'll continue to test the phone in terms of reception, call quality, and of course everything else we'll cover in detail in our in-depth written review on Mobile Tech Review. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Droid Charge by Samsung available April 28th on Verizon. Be sure to visit our website to read the full review.